When taking a Brannock measurement, make sure that you're using the correct measuring device. The colored is for the women and the black is for the men. All measurements are done weight bearing, so have the patient stand, make, making sure both feet are parallel. The heel should be correctly seated in the heel cup, and the first measurement you want to take is the heel to toe. The heel to toe measurement is the easiest measurement. You're going to look directly down on the patient's foot as an angle can cause misreading. In reading this, I'm reading her as a six and a half plus. I mean, she's over the six and a half, but she's not quite to the seven. Now we're going to measure her heel the ball, and I'm going to slide the arch length indicator up to the widest portion of her foot at this first MPJ. I'm going to make sure that I'm getting it dead on, and so I'm measuring her arch length as a 7. This is her heel to ball measurement, and what this is doing is it's taking her arch and putting it in the predetermined arch of the shoe. It's putting the widest portion of her foot at the widest portion of the shoe. It's also allowing her foot where it bends and flexes to sit in the part of the shoe that's going to bend and flex. So if I put her in a shoe that's too short, it's going to put it up here and it's going to feel too tight. And if I put her in a shoe that's a little too long, it's going to put it further back. So this here, oftentimes you'll notice that on a patient with a hallux valgus deformity, as Judy has, you're going to find a longer heel to ball length than the heel to toe length. So for example, if you're looking at my hand and imagine that you're gonna buy a pair of gloves, I would need an adult size glove. Um, the proportion of my hand, if I bend my fingers, has not, does not change. So just because I bent my fingers would not mean that I could fit into a child size glove. So uh, in patients that have a hallux valgus or an amputation where you have digital deformities, the rest of their foot, the arch and the instep, have not changed. And so they would still need the adult size glove or the longer size shoe. The next measurement is the width measurement. And you're going to take the device and slide that up to the lateral side of her foot. You want to make sure that you're touching the foot but not squeezing it too tightly. I also keep the heel to ball indicator positioned as it were. I'm looking at her heel to toe, which is a six and a half. And I'm finding that across the bar. I find the six and a half here, and that then relates to a width measurement of a C. Now, if that were in between two, I would mark that C to B or whatever that would be. Now, this measurement is a two dimensional measurement. It's measuring her foot size, not her shoe size. It's also in proportion to her length. So, if she were to measure a nine, for instance, and I look at the nine, I would see that the nine she would be measuring an A width. And if she measured a five, a five would be measuring a D width. The next measurement is a semi-circumference. And this is done using a tape measure. You're going to take the tape measure and you're going to put it from the fifth MPJ on the floor, up over the dorsum, to the first MPJ on the floor. And again, this is done in inches. I'm measuring her at five and three eighths. So that's five and three in inches. Most women be measure between a five and a six. Most men usually measure between a six and a seven. This helps us get an idea of how thick or girthy the foot is to get a better three-dimensional idea. On patients that are wearing an AFO, you want to do all your measurements without the brace first, but do one more measurement with the brace on, and that measurement is going to be a heel-to-toe measurement. So I'm measuring her heel-to-toe as a seven and a half, and that measurement has now changed because of the brace. So the posterior aspect of the brace is pushing her forward, and it's changing the size shoe that she would need. Patients that measure a size to a size and a half difference, I typically don't need a mixed pair for, but if they're measuring a size and a half or more, you may want to consider a mixed pair, which would be two different size shoes to accommodate two different size feet.